Good morning everybody, it's Phil Smith from Snowwork Ski Courses here reporting live directly from uh, Teen, well near Teen, just down the valley from Teen. I'd love to say welcome to a very sunny day here in Teen, but it's not sunny, but the good news is it is snowing and snowing very, very heavily up high in Teen at the moment. The news is we're going to have a, about over a metre of snow over the next couple of days. But unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get onto it to ski. But the good news is, hopefully those glaciers will open in the summer. And when they do, it's going to be good. So we're looking forward to that. Anyway, welcome everybody. We are live and I'm here on, I think it's our fifth webinar to talk about unraveling the myths of off-piece skiing. We did a webinar, our last webinar, um, early on in the week, which was unraveling the myths of ski technique. So this is carrying on from that webinar and we thought we'd bring in the off-piece skin as we know there are a lot of people that would love to ski off-piece competently. So here we are to talk about it and we love talking about it. But before we talk about unraveling the myths of off-piece skiing, any, any talk on off-piece has to start off with safety. This webinar is not going to talk about the safety aspects of off-piece skiing, but I cannot talk about off-piece unless I mention it. So, remember, everybody, if you're going off-piece skiing, please, please, please go with a qualified guide or a qualified uh, ski instructor. Absolutely, 100%, make sure you go with somebody that's qualified. If you're not going with a, a ski instructor or mountain guide, then make sure you are qualified enough yourself. So that's the end of the safety chat. We will run a webinar at some point on off-piece safety and we'll let you know when that is. Again, one other thing to talk about before moving on to the myths of off-piece skiing is ski equipment. Because there are so many people that spend so much money on ski lessons, coaching, etc, etc. But fail to get the benefit from using the most appropriate equipment for your level. Now if you can already ski off-piece, and I know there's going to be people watching this webinar that are great off-piece skiers, you know as well as I do, you can ski on anything. I used to ski on slalom skis when I was younger. That was before the invention of big wide skis, uh, which opened up the whole of the off-piece to so many more skiers. So if you're a good off-piece skier, you can ski on anything. But to take that journey, it is so much easier if you get the right ski equipment. Okay, now and the, the skis ideally need to be reasonably wide. Going really wide doesn't necessarily make it easier, it could make it more difficult. So it depends on your ability, it depends on the snow texture, it depends on the terrain that you're going into. So this is just general advice. Now what we tend to do on our courses is use skis around about the 100 millimeters underfoot. So when we're talking about underfoot, we're talking about the center of the ski here, right between the center of the binding where the narrowest part of the ski is. That's about 100 millimeters underfoot. Narrower than that, depending on your ability level, you could still use them. Wider than that, again, you can still use them. But this is just a generalization. This is the Salomon QST99, which we tend to give out on our courses. And we found from experience, it's a perfect, perfect size. 100 millimeters underfoot enables you to be in the snow. So you get in the benefit and enjoyment of skiing in the snow. It allows you to displace snow, um, but not too much, because that can be difficult in itself, and not too little, which can also be difficult. So from experience, it's about the right width underfoot. Okay, so I'm gonna put those QSTs to the side there. So that's the ski corner. Now, I, I can't tell you how many times I have started my off-piece lessons with a trip to the ski shop. Uh, absolutely valuable. I just look down at everybody's feet, see what they've got on on their feet, and then make a decision from there. And if there's anybody with s uh, small narrow skis, okay, let's go into the ski shop, 25 euros for the day, boom. 
well, well, well worth it. So we're going to move on to our myths. Now we covered safety and we covered ski quiet. And both of those are going to be covered in much more detail on other webinars. But let's get on to the myths. That's what we're here to talk about. So myth number one is that you have to ski differently. Somehow you have to learn a new technique, which is for powder skiing. You don't. That is the good news here. You don't need to learn anything different. If you are a competent skier, competent red run skier, then you can ski off piece to the side on what we would call off piece red runs. Because the only thing that is really changing is the snow that you are skiing in. Now, let me take an example of other sports. When I go out mountain biking, if I'm using my mountain bike on a cycle track, which is the equivalent to a pisted blue run, and I decide to go off-road, I don't change my technique. There isn't a new technique that I need to learn for cycling. I just apply myself differently. So it's how you apply yourself in off-piste is key. You can take your technique and use it on equivalent off-piste and just apply yourself better. Now, application of technique or application of yourself is up here. So it's very psychological and it's also physical. Don't forget we're moving into the snow so it's gonna be more physical. And that is the key, application of the mental side of you and the physical side of you. The same thing on mountain biking. When I go from on-road to off-road, it's more difficult. It's not different, it's just more difficult. So I have to apply myself differently. So that is key. Many, many people think there is an off-piece technique. There's not. We all ski differently. When you go into the off-piste, everybody is skiing differently. Some people ski with their feet together, some people ski with their feet apart, some people ski one foot to the other foot, what we call foot to foot, one-footed. Some people ski very much two feet, two-footed, so their feet and skis are doing a similar thing. Okay, so there are many, many different techniques. Some people stand tall, some people stand uh, low, some people do short turns, some people do long turns everything. So the good news is you don't have to learn a new technique to ski off piece. You just need to learn how to apply yourself. That's myth number one, busted. Okay, myth number two is when you ski off piece, you have to ski with your feet closer together. Now this has been around for an awful long time. More or less I don't know, 80% of the people thinking of going off piece skiing think that you have to bring your feet together. For some reason, it's going to be easier. It's not, okay? It's easier for people that ski with their feet together, but it's not easier for people that ski with their feet apart. So this comes back to what we've just been talking about. People have all different styles and techniques skiing off piece. So you don't have to ski with your feet together. Now, just as an exercise and a bit of fun, I started to list all the sports that you do with your feet together and all the sports that you do with your feet apart. And apart, and also sports that you do where you work your feet differently. The list just went on and on and on. I could not stop writing. Football, cycling, running, walking, rugby, more or less every team sport, curling, ice hockey, it just went on and on and on, swimming. And then I started to list sports where you do with your feet together and doing the same thing, as though they were one unit. I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> well, I actually came up with one thing which was butterfly in swimming and I think that was it. I'm sure you guys can think of something but I couldn't. So where we got this impression going off piece skiing you have to put your feet together I don't know. Now in the whole of this webinar please bear in mind if you're a good off piece skier and a competent off piece skier you're going to be able to ski however you want. So I'm not saying if you ski with your feet together you've got to ski with them, your feet apart. That's nonsense. You can do whatever you want. This is for those people that are struggling, that are taking the journey. It's okay for you to ski with your feet apart. You do not need to bring them together. Okay, which brings us on to myth number three which is you have to ski parallel to ski off piste. Again, good news for many, many of you, you don't need to ski parallel. 
I have seen good parallel skiers struggle and I've seen skiers that don't ski parallel get down absolutely everything. And some of you watching this will know that. If you're a mountaineer, uh, you can get down anything with your feet doing different things, absolutely guaranteed. So this brings on, uh, me on to a very key point which I'd love to share with you, which is about your feet and how you use your skis. And what I was, like many instructors, was led to believe in our ski instructors exams. And it was explained something like this. When we were doing our ski instructors exams, and for me that was a long time ago, um, getting better in skiing was described something like that. Here's a turn. Okay, one turn if you can see that. Okay, there's one turn. And it was described like this. If I just turn that down a little bit, you'll be able to see it a bit easier. Down the bottom here, okay, was what described what that was described as an intermediate skier. And intermediate skiers, I'll just write that intermediate there. Intermediate skiers tend to use the edges of their skis after they've turned, at the end of the turn. So they turn and then use the edges of the skis. And only when you become an advanced skier, I'll put that number two, advanced, are you able to use your edges towards the fall line. So you start your turn and as you approach the fall line, you're able to use your edges. And then only as an expert can you use your edges at the start of the turn. Okay, so only experts use their edges here. Advanced skiers start their turn, then bring the edges in, and intermediate skiers turn and then use their edges. Have I got some news for you guys listening in? You don't need to be an expert skier to use your edges right at the start of the turn. In fact, beginners on day one do exactly that. So I can put a beginner up by the expert. In fact, a day one beginner. Okay? And think about it. The snowplow. We have our skis like that, we're on the edges of both skis, and what do I do? When I want to change direction, I use the inside edge of my outside ski and round I go. If I want to change direction the other way, the inside edge of that ski. So if beginners use their edges at the start of the turn, and experts are also able to use their edges at the start of the turn, What's happening here, the intermediate and advanced skier? Why aren't they? And it's due to the parallel turn. Because the parallel turn means it's very difficult to begin using your edges before you turn. Very, very difficult. So a lot of intermediate skiers using parallel turns have to try to turn their skis first because they can't get the edge. So they have to turn their skis. Now, on piste, you can get away with that because you're skiing on the surface of the snow. But when you go off piece, you're in the snow. So if you try to turn your skis, it's going to be very, very difficult. And here's why. Are you ready? Okay, this is an eye opener. Here's a ski. I'll come back to the Salomon QST99. And I'm gonna grab the ski in the center of the ski, okay? As though it's my foot here. So imagine my hand being my foot and I am turning the skis. So if you're on piece, it's relatively easy to turn the skis. So I can turn the ski and then use the edges as I'm going round the corner. But now imagine that ski being put into the snow. So I'm gonna to have to call Emma <laughs> over here. Okay, so Emma, if you can grab that ski. Okay, so here's Emma. So imagine this is Emma's foot. This is the ski, she's in the off-piste, um, in the snow, which means there's now resistance against the skis from turning. So I'm just gonna take my little finger there, and my little finger there, and now, just with one hand if you can, just try to turn that ski. Absolutely impossible. Uh, keep turning it, absolutely impossible. He okay, can't do it. Okay, that's fantastic. But what you can do, okay, when you saw Emma trying to turn that ski, you could see her elbow twisting, but not the ski. Now, if that was your leg, that is your knee. 
So it comes as no surprise in the off-piste skiing, we get lots of injuries occurring. Why? Because people are trying to physically turning their skis rather than using a more powerful movement. Now we spoke about this in one of our other webinars on snow displacement. Okay, Turning your skis uses smaller muscles than pushing your skis. Can you see that? Here I'm using the massive muscle groups here, the quads and the glutes to push the ski. So if I can use a pushing action in the off-piste, then I stand A, a much better chance of getting down the mountain safely and in control, and B, not injuring myself. Okay, now this is absolutely key. To do that, you need to be able to grab the edge at the start of the turn. So the inside edge at the start of the turn. If you're an expert, you'll be able to do that with your skis parallel. But if you're just starting the journey into off-piste, then you may struggle with that. So if you uh, open your feet, okay, and then get the inside edge of the outside ski before you go around, you've got something to push against. You can push against the snow and that can deflect you around the corner. Okay, so parallel turns is not the be all and end all of off-piste skiing. In fact, it's much easier if you don't ski parallel, unless you can already ski off piece. And if that's the case, you can do whatever you want. So, we're coming on to something else which I've already spoken about. I just mentioned if you're starting the journey into off piece skiing. So now I'm gonna talk about the journey, and this is really very, very important. I want you to imagine the journey from starting off in off piece to becoming an a expert mountain guide, an expert ski instructor, an expert off piece skier. So here's the journey. You started off here. Let's say we're going to start the off piece journey. How many weeks skiing? Should we say about 10 weeks? Let's imagine somebody has had about 10 weeks and it's their first time off piece, their first week off piece. And then we start taking this journey one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 weeks. Let's stop there. So we've got from zero to 500 weeks. Now if you take a, a top ski instructor, a fully qualified ski instructor, or a mountain guide, how many weeks off-piece skiing do you think they would have done? 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, 250, let's say 30 weeks a year, let's say a minimum of 15 years, what's that? That's 400, I can't think, 450 weeks, is it? <laughs> okay, so they're up in this area somewhere, okay? Uh, maybe 200, 300, 400 weeks of piece skiing. So they can ski off piece, so you can see that, okay, up at the end there. 200, 300, 400 weeks off piece skiing. And here we have people learning to ski off piece, maybe one to 10 weeks. Now, what these guys do is completely different to here. What we need to know, or what you need to know, was what were these guys doing back here at one to 10 weeks? How were they skiing off piece? How did they learn to ski off piece? Because this is one of the biggest misunderstandings of off-piece skiing. People at this end of the journey are looking pe at people at that end of the journey and think that's how you ski off-piece. It's not. That's how they ski off-piece and how you may ski off-piece when you're at that end of the journey. Okay? Now, everybody knows this quote. It's one of the most famous quotes around. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs like everybody else. So this is your staircase here. This is your staircase. So what were these skiers doing back here? Now a good way to understand that is next time you go skiing and it snows and there's a lot of powder around, watch the local kids out skiing from the, uh, from the club to sport or the race team. Just watch them skiing the off-piece or from the ski scores. They certainly don't ski like they've had two or three hundred weeks skiing off piece that most of them will probably quickly grab get into some kind of wide stance 
with their skis in a sort of snow plow action and start pushing and shoving the snow to the side. They ski very differently to these people here. So what you need to do next time you go off piece skiing with a mountain guide or an instructor is ask them. Ask them, say, okay, how did you ski when you were at my level? So if you're a, let's say, a three week off piece skier, you can ask your mountain guide or ski instructor, how did you ski when you were only three weeks into off piece skiing? Myself personally, what I tend to do, I always try to adjust my performance so that I am skiing just ahead of the people in my group. So if they're a first time off piece skier, I ski as though I've only been skiing off piece for a few days. I'm just ahead of them so they get a good visual of what it's like. If it's a one week skier, I may try to ski as though I'm a two week skier. If they're a 10 week skier, I try to ski as though I'm a 15 week skier. So people can get a good image. And if they're a 30, 40, 50 week skier, I ski as though I'm a 60, 70, 80 week skier and so on. Okay, I certainly, for one week skier, don't ski as a 300 week off piece skier. They will get completely the wrong impression. So please bear that in mind. There's a journey that you have to go through. Okay, how are we doing for time? Not too bad. We're gonna move on to a couple of the other myths now. So this is myth number four, and this is absolutely key. Again, it came from somewhere, and if you're a good off-piece skier, you can probably do it absolutely fine, no problem at all. This is for people that are struggling skiing off-piece. And myth number four is you have to have equally weighted skis. You don't, okay? You don't have to have equally weighted skis. I mean, if you're a 10 week skier, try skiing with the equal weight on both skis. It is seriously difficult, believe you me. And then try to do that off piece, it's even more difficult. So the good news is you don't have to equally weight your skis. And I will tell you why. One, weight is the wrong terminology. Okay, we don't use it in skiing, or we try not to. Why? Now we covered this in one of our other webinars on snow displacement weight is something you cannot really adjust your weight is your weight okay there's a bit of adjustment if i stand up at the top of the extension my skis become light and i sink down at the bottom of the extension my skis become a bit heavier but only last momentarily before it returns to normal so generally speaking your weight is your weight so you can't really adjust it, which means if you're skiing in off-piece where the snow texture is changing, it's getting heavier or lighter or wind-blown, and you're just using your body weight, you're basically gonna be in trouble. What you can do, however, is use your strength. Now, strength is infinitely variable, okay? Because you can adjust it. If I take my strength, I can infinitely adjust my pushing action, I can infinitely adjust my strength. Same thing with my leg, okay? I can infinitely adjust how I'm using that leg. So whatever snow comes my way, whatever the depth of the snow, whatever the texture of the snow, I can move it. Now I've used the word move it, and I'm not gonna go into detail on moving snow here. If you wanna know more about that, go back onto our YouTube channel, click, the webinar for snow displacement, and it will tell you all about moving snow. So if you use strength, you can move the snow, you can move it, okay? So weight is really the wrong word. And people that do use body weight, what they tend to find, if the snow is nice, fairly light, they can get away with it. They can skip, but when the snow becomes windblown or heavy or thick or deeper, it becomes more difficult. And that's because you have to start using your strength. So that comes back to some of our other things that we spoke about early on. It's easier to use your strength if you've got a wider stance. Unless, well, unless you ski in a narrow stance, you can still do it. We can still do it. Okay. It's easier to use your strength if you get the edge right at the start of the turn. Remember early on in the webinar, get the edge, then you can push the snow and use your strength, okay? Now, you can push one ski or two skis and everything in between. So you can use both skis in a similar manner or you can use their, them differently. And that is not a problem. 
There are people that ski off piece that do all sorts of things. Okay, some people are what we call very one-footed. They love to ski from one foot to the other. Some people are very two-footed, and some people it's a mixture. Ourselves personally, well, for myself. I change between the two. I'm a very one-footed skier. I love doing that. I feel it gives me great versatility in what I'm doing. Sometimes when the snow goes deep, I like to move on to a more of a two-footed action. But I'm using strength as opposed to weight. Now you can use weight and then you can change your speed. So there are some variables in weight if you're able to change your speed. But that's a bit complex, so we'll save that for another time. The best thing is if you're beginning the journey into off-piece or if you're struggling, is to get used to using your strength. Now there's one thing that you can say to yourself before you ski down every off-piece section. You can look at the snow below and you can say to yourself, can I move it? Can I move that snow? And if the answer is yes, then you can ski it. But if you look at the snow and think, I can't move that, then you cannot ski it. It's not possible. In order to ski snow, you have to move it. Okay, so say that to yourself every time before you go down. Can I move it? Yes, let's go then. Okay, so that's equally weighted skis. If you ski with your skis equally weighted, no problem at all. But if you're struggling, you don't have to do it. Okay, myth number five. Okay, and everybody will know this one that's uh, gone off piece. Bounce. <laughs> bounce. Now, the only time I bounce is when I'm on the, my kid's trampoline outside. I think that's the only time I bounce. I can't remember bouncing anywhere else. Don't bounce down the stairs. I certainly don't go bouncing when I go out shopping. I don't bounce in the car. And when I take my road bike or my mountain bike from the cycle track, to off-road, I start, don't start bouncing on it, okay? So somewhere along the line, this bouncing has come into off-piece skiing. Now, it could be thought as a drill or a skill. So you, it could be taught as a drill or a skill, and it might help, it may help. Some people it helps, some people, people it doesn't help at all. Okay, so if you're using bouncing, it's more of a drill or a skill. Now we spoke about drills and skills, in the last webinar. So go on to the myths of ski technique and that talks about a lot about drills and skills. Drills and skills are different to playing the game. When you go into the real off-piste, you're gonna have everything coming your way. The terrain is gonna be changing, gonna be going from gentle to steep to cambers, the snow's gonna be changed from light to heavy to deep to shallow to windblown. You're gonna have hazards, rocks, gullies, trees, all sorts of things, other skiers. So you can't just go down the slope going boing, 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 boing. You'll end up at some point coming unstuck. You actually have to ski the mountain in front of you, ski the snow in front of you, ski the terrain in front of you. Adjust to everything that's coming your way and stay in control. Okay, stay in control. Absolutely paramount for your safety and it's so far much more enjoyable. Now if you've got a lot of bottom, you don't mind falling over, getting up, falling over, getting up, sure, just go for it. Bounce up and down and see what happens. But if you want to stay upright and if you want to get down competently in control and really enjoy yourself, we suggest you don't go bouncing down the mountainside. You get your skis and you start to use the ski skillfully to control your descent. Okay, that's playing the game. Remember, drills and skills and exercise and playing the game. Right, myth number six. We're on to our last myth which is myth number six, and it's similar to bouncing, it's rhythm. People think you have to have a rhythm when you go off-piece skiing. The good news is, no. <laughs> like the other ones, you don't. If you, if you can, if you can already ski off-piece and you've got a great rhythm, fantastic. As I said right at the start of this webinar, if you're a competent off-piece skier, you can ski however you want. But if you're starting the journey, you don't need a rhythm. What you do need is control. You need to get control. And the rhythm may 
come from that. Now there are lots of different types of rhythm. So that is a standard rhythm which is exactly the same all the time. Now imagine skiing down a mountain where every turn is exactly the same. You can only do that if the terrain and the environment is the same. Now for more on that, back to the YouTube, click one of our webinars which is Ski Open and that will talk about changing environments. So you can only do that if there's nothing interfering. But that's not off-piece skiing. The snow is changing, the terrain is changing, okay? the hazards are changing, there's other people around. Okay? So you have to change what you're doing. So this is also a rhythm. So this is a big misunderstanding. What often happens, we watch somebody who is competent skiing off piste on fairly consistent gradient. Now, if the snow texture is the same and the gradient is consistent, the likelihood every time I come round my turn, every time I come round, I will be releasing that turn and starting a new one at a similar time but every one will be slightly different. I have a feeling of when the right time is to release this turn and start the next turn, the right time. Now for an onlooker, they will look at me thinking I've got the same rhythm. And I may have, but that's just the output. I'm skiing in control, the onlooker thinks I'm trying to get a rhythm. No, the rhythm comes from skiing in control. And that way, if I go steeper, I can hold the turn for a little bit longer. If it's steeper, I can push a bit more. I can avoid obstacles. I can slow down. I can speed up. I can do whatever I want. So a rhythm is the end result of skiing in control, competently, skillfully, and well. So that is absolutely key. If you just go into off-piece and you try to get a rhythm, you're gonna come unstuck, unless it's a drill on re relatively easy terrain. So again, a lot of these myths, rhythm, bounce, equally weighted skis, you can do, do them as drills, but don't use them to play the game where you have to adjust to the mountainside. Okay, we've been going for just over 30 minutes. So a quick recap. Firstly, safety, 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 safety. Secondly, make sure you have the right equipment. Don't go spending thousands and thousands, hundreds and hundreds of pounds, euros on lessons if you're on the wrong equipment. Get the right equipment. On, go onto our website, tab in uh, how to select skis, and that will give you some good advice on the best skis to use for what the type of skiing that you're doing. Then we move on to this, myths. Myth number one, you don't have to ski differently. You just have to apply yourself mentally and physically and tactically. Okay, you have to apply the technique that you have available to you. Application. Obviously you're gonna be improving and your technique will change as you improve. But to start off, you don't have to learn something new. It's application. Myth number two, you have to ski with your feet together. No, 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 no. Some people do, and that's fine because they can already ski off piste. But it's a journey. At some point in your journey, you may decide to ski with a closer stance if you want to. But you certainly don't have to. I don't, many other skiers don't. There's amazing off piste skiers there that ski with their feet together, and there's amazing off piste skiers that ski with their feet apart. It's up to you. Myth number three, you have to ski parallel. You don't, okay? You don't have to ski parallel. If you're a mountaineer, you will know this. You'll do anything to get down that mountain in control. And that means stemming, stepping, plowing, all sorts of things. So don't worry about skiing parallel. If, it, if you take that journey, you happen to end up parallel, that's fine, but it's not the be all and end all. If you already ski off piece and you ski with your skis parallel as much as you can, great. Okay, this is for people who are struggling. Myth number four, oh, in between that we had the journey. Don't forget the journey. You've got to take the journey. You've got to take the staircase. 
and don't copy people on three or four hundred weeks off piece scheme when you're on one or two weeks. It just won't work. You need to know what these guys were doing when these guys and girls doing when they were at your level at one, two, three, four, ten weeks, twenty weeks. Okay, not at three hundred weeks. If you're skiing with an instructor or guide, ask them what did you how did you ski off piece when you started? It's an eye opener. Okay. Myth number four, equally weighted skis. You don't. Okay, you can do. If you can already ski off piece, great. Okay. Equally weighted, think of pressure instead of weight. Pressure and strength you can vary. Weight, you don't have much variation in using your body weight. So it's far more effective to use your strength. And your skis don't need to be equally weighted. They can be if you want, but if you find it easier to work one ski than the other, do that. Myth number five, bounce. As a drill, okay, no problem. It could be a good drill, but you don't have to bounce. What you do have to do is ski in control. Now, if you happen to be skiing in control and you start to link your turns, you will get something back from the snow as you finish each turn and go into the next one. And that can often be referred to as a bounce. It's a bit like landing on trampoline and the trampoline trying to regain its, its place in space, okay? It pushes back a little bit. So the snow will push back and that can be referred to as a bounce. So you will tend to get a feeling of this as you get more competent. But don't try to do it. You'll end up just getting out of control and lose your balance and end up in the snow. Myth number six, rhythm. You don't need a rhythm. You need to ski in control. Again, as you get better and you get used to controlling your skiing and your turns, you will pick up a rhythm. But a rhythm is the end result of skiing well. Getting a rhythm doesn't make you ski well. That's absolutely key. Again, it can be used as a drill or an exercise. Try getting into a rhythm when you're skiing through a forest in off-piste with hazards everywhere, with drops and ice and deep snow and heavy snow. Don't forget, off-piste skiing is an untouched powder field where it's the same all the time. Okay, might be sometimes, which is wonderful. And when it is, you'll feel like you have a nice rhythm. But if you're skiing through forests and woods and hazards and steep and... Uh, slopes that are becoming narrow and wide and all sorts of things then it's just about learning to control your descent in off-piste and that's it folks we are over 30 minutes we are near enough 35 minutes so I'm gonna finish there thank you for joining me go on to our website grab any information you need there's loads of information on our blogs go on to our YouTube site Loads of stuff there, and I will see you at our next webinar. Have a great day.